Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about higher sear inverter systems because I've done videos on them in the past and I've had some pushback and guys will say, well, you know, the math doesn't work out and it doesn't make sense for in my area to do an inverter system and pay this much extra. That's fine, but I wanted to do this video because I want you to know if you're a homeowner in the market for a heating and air system that there are now advantages to getting a inverter communicating system than ever before. And we're gonna go through those advantages. And again, we're not just talking about the cost difference. Does it make sense to get a higher sear system and spend the money versus the low single stage system, right? That's not the point of this video and whether the math works out. So let's go through those. And first, let's just knock that out of the way real quick. First, let's talk about the fact that inverter systems do not equate to sear very well. And the reason is when they compare these systems, they're comparing a lot of times the systems running at 100% capacity. But I'll tell you that inverter systems at times are barely running and drawing very little electricity, meaning your electric bill will love you. Okay. So your system, even though it might only be two or three sear higher than a single stage system, just realize there are times when that system is just barely running and drawing very little electricity. And the second thing I wanted to say on that, if we're talking about efficiencies and sear and all this stuff, is the fact that now there are systems that are inverter systems on the market, heat pump systems that can operate at lower ambient temperatures than ever before. And so what do I mean by that? Well, years ago, heat pumps, if it got below a certain temperature outside, I mean, you started getting below 40, 35, 30 degrees, you start getting below all of that, it became useless. I mean, that's why they would put electric heat strips in there because the heat pump just couldn't keep up. Or if you have a dual fuel system, the gas would have to come on. But as time has gone on with these inverter systems, you've got all these companies have now come out with systems that can run at much lower ambient temperatures outside. Some of these systems well below zero degrees Fahrenheit are still being able to produce heat. I just wanted to knock those two out because they pertain towards the efficiency that I said we wouldn't talk about. Number three, they do provide better comfort. They have less of a dead band. And what I mean by that is single stage systems, when they operate, they will come on and run at 100% capacity or be off. There's no in-between unless it's a stage system and there might be one or two stages in between. But again, it's either on or off, right? There's no, there's no in-between like the inverter systems. And what'll happen is you set a temperature in your home and we have something called thermostat dead band. And what that is, is if you have it set at 72 degrees, that system will turn on and heat. It will run and run and run and run and get you up a half degree higher than what you have it set at. And it may not even show that on the display, okay? But it's still doing it and then it'll turn off. So your system turns off outside, blower stops running, all that good stuff and then it'll start to drop in your house again, right? And then it'll get a degree and a half below. Again, you may not see that on the display of the thermostat, but it'll get a degree and a half low and turn back on. That's called dead band. That little area right there is called dead band. With inverter systems, they don't have that. Communicating inverter systems, what they'll do is they'll figure out, so as they're running, right, they'll turn on, they, if they gotta ramp up and you know cool down the house or heat up the home, they'll turn on and they'll run way up here, just like your single stage system, but then they'll find out, they'll kinda, they'll change the speed of the system and the energy consumption until they figure out what speed do I need to run at to keep temperature. And then it'll just run at that constant temperature drawing very little electricity and keeping that house super comfortable. Another reason that a lot of folks are selecting inverter systems is they are quieter. So if you have a house that that matters, if the system is near where you spend time, maybe it's near your back deck and you spend time out there, or maybe it's near a bedroom window or whatever, inverter systems by default are so much quieter. And you might say, well, how much quieter, you know? Uh, are we talking about a car that has no muffler versus one that has one of those mufflers that just 
quiet it a little bit, but it still sounds like a, a buzzing bee. No, no, we're talking about night and day in some cases. You got a single stage system and it sounds like a diesel engine out there and you know, it's just running. Well, inverter systems at times, you won't even know if they're running unless you walk right up to them and look down. Oh yeah, the fan is turning. So they're just a lot more quieter. Another thing to consider is humidity. So inverter systems by default, for the most part, and I know there are exceptions to every rule, but for the most part, inverter systems are better at removing humidity from the home when running in air conditioning. And there's a couple reasons for that, but mostly the main reason is, is because of that whole dead band thing we were talking about. That system is running constantly at times at a very low electrical consumption and still running and removing humidity in your home and cooling the space. Another one is inverter systems last longer. And I know I'm gonna have pushback on that one, but I'll tell you this, in my entire career, and inverter systems have now been out for a little while, in my entire career, I have replaced tons of single stage compressors and two stage compressors. I have only ever replaced two inverter compressors, okay? I have a guy that's working for me that's been doing this way longer than I have, and I asked him, I said, how many have you ever replaced? He said, none. I've never replaced an inverter compressor. In fact, a lot of companies have come out with unit replacement warranties. I know Daikin, which is the company that we work with, they've come out with these warranties that if the compressor were to die, they'll give you a whole new outdoor unit. You know, they don't even want you to replace the compressor. Here's a whole new outdoor unit because they know that they just last longer. The biggest argument I get to that a lot of times is, well, the motors don't last longer and this and that. I think that's tomato, tomato. A lot of single stage systems have variable speed motors anyway, and so do inverter systems. So that, that's not much of an argument to me. But when you're talking about big ticket items, especially being the compressor, in my experience, and most of the guys that I know, anyone else I've talked to, inverter compressors last longer. If installed properly, they last way longer. They have less wear and tear. There's no big spikes in energy. And in some cases, they're running off of DC power, which receives even less abuse. There's no windings in there that a capacitor has to get that system up and rolling and all that good stuff. A lot of times they'll have single stage AC power and a lot. some of these systems are converting that to three phase DC. And so that's a whole nother animal. But the point being, they just last longer. They last better. I think the only exception to that rule is probably control boards. So that's why in a lot of cases, if you're installing an inverter system or a ductless mini split, please put in surge protection if, if nothing else. But now they've got other products. They've got phase monitors. They got brownout protection. They've got all these different protections to help protect those boards. So again, not an argument. If you say, well, you know, it doesn't last longer than a single stage system. Again, I know there's exceptions to every rule. I know there's somebody out there that's going to say, well, I've got this single stage system and it's 35 years old and I never get it maintained and it still keeps working. I got you. But that's to me is just like saying that you have a car that you never change the oil in and it's still running. Good for you, but you are the minority, I assure you. Another one would be, a lot of folks do bring up that price difference. The pricing is starting to get better, or I'm not saying it's getting better from a standpoint that it's dropping, but the gap between a single stage system and a top of the line inverter communicating system, in a lot of cases, has gotten smaller. Um, at least in my experience, when I've priced it with several of the big brands, that gap is smaller by percentage than it used to be. So they're becoming a little more affordable than they used to. Another one would be a lot of the side discharge units. So we're seeing the Daikin Fit, the Train XV19, a lot of these side discharge inverter systems where the fan blows out the front versus the top, right? Instead of a trash can style unitary system where the fan blows out the top. A lot of these side discharge systems require very little clearances around them. In some cases, we're talking minimal. I mean, we're talking just a few inches, four to six inches between the back of that coil and a wall or some other obstruction. They're just requiring a lot less clearance. If you don't have a lot of real estate, you don't need as much clearance as you used to. You don't have to cut your bushes back and things like that. 
And the other cool thing about them is there is a such thing as wall brackets. I know there are wall brackets for unitary systems or something like that, but I think in general, it's a little more common and a little easier to install, to be honest with you, to have wall brackets for a side discharge unit. So you can mount that thing, you know, up in the air somewhere if you need to. Of course, you definitely need to be able to service it. So, you know, don't be hanging it. I see these hilarious videos online where they've hung it 60 stories up and somebody's got to try to service that thing by sticking their head out a window. But you, the fact that you can mount it on a wall and get it out of you know the way of something is pretty cool. Another would be that we're not just talking about higher sear in a lot of cases. We're talking about a lot of other higher ratings such as HSPF and EER and things like that. Ultimately meaning you're going to have a better performing system that uses a whole lot less utilities. Another argument you can make for higher sear systems is in some cases they come with better warranties. So a lot of these single stage systems, the manufacturers know themselves. That's the thing. When I get these guys that argue with me, just go look at the warranties. The manufacturers are giving better warranties for these higher sear systems, not because they make that much more off of them or anything like that. They know they're better. So you got the single stage system and you got this high sear system with two very different warranties. I know with Daikin, they come with a 12 year unit replacement warranty for major failures on these higher sear systems. And some of the lower end systems, they come with either nothing or in some cases a six year. But I know there's other brands too that come with way better warranties with higher sear systems. Another argument you can make is there are more options for an inverter system. Things like the VRV Life that I did a video on recently where you can have one outdoor unit pairing with a gas furnace system and a wall hung mini split or floor mount mini split or whatever, but you have all these different options that you've never had before with single stage or two stage systems that communicating inverter systems can offer you. And the last thing that I think is an advantage to buying a more higher sear system, a better system than a single stage lower end system, and that is their errors and their communications of problems. And what I mean by that is in a lot of cases, if you have a single stage 14 sear, 13 sear, whatever, outdoor unit, if there is a problem, that system will in some cases continue to run and run and run and run and run until it breaks down even more. And I know they have pressure switches and things like that in place, but it's not the same. It's not like if you get some sort of an error, you know, something's going on and then the thermostat pops up and says, error, something's going on out here. Let's get somebody to look at this before you have a bigger issue on your hands. So I hope that helps. If you are in the market for a heating and air system and you're in Griffin Air's coverage area in the Northern Neck or Middle Peninsula of Virginia, give us a call. We'd love to earn your business. We have the best warranty in the area and we'll give you a free estimate. But if you're in the market for a heating and air system and you're not in Griffin Air's coverage area, before you spend thousands, check out my website, newhvacguide.com. It'll guide you through the process helping you avoid a lot of the problems, scams, all kinds of things out there. I've put so much information on there, it's as if I wrote a book, but instead of a book that will collect us and become outdated, this website can be added to and changed. I've got a whole page called No-Nos, I've got a whole page for good and bad heating and air brands, and I just think before you spend thousands, check out that website. All that said, thanks for watching, hit the subscribe button, we'll see you next time.